Hi everyone, it's me, Carly McGuire, and we are live on Facebook for our last virtual safari of the day, three for three. We've had so much success and so much support from you all today, and we cannot thank you enough on this Colorado Gives Day for your donations. We're so close to that matching goal of $41,500, and that number is significant because once we double it, we will have $83,000, which is how much it costs to feed our animals here every month. That's just the food cost for more than 3,000 animals, $83,000. So we need your support today, every day, but today you get a matching donation up to $41,500. So double that impact, donate through the link in the description or right here on Facebook. So today, our last animal we are featuring is Lisu the clouded leopard. She has a very special story and she's quite hungry because she's been waiting to get her special treat from the keeper. So I'm going to let them take it over and tell you why she's so special and why with this zootrition, we're talking so much about nutrition and food here at Denver Zoo, why her story is one of the most impactful and important and you'll see exactly why we need those donations. Hi Kira, thanks for joining us. All right, we've got Kelsey here. She is giving some scratches to Lisu, yes. our clouded leopard, who's in this exhibit here in Toyota Elephant Passage. And I'm sure if you've walked through here, you might not have spotted her, but she is normally out here. She's just kind of hiding if it's above a certain degree threshold. And what a beautiful, warm day for her today. Check yes. out those teeth, check out her head, those big, paws of her. <laughs> yes, we're talking about, we're gonna feed her, we're talking about food, but she's also cycling right now. So she's very into attention, wants a ton <laughs> of scratches. So she's super into this right now. Xander says, hi, thanks for joining us again, Xander. Hi, Frank, this is actually the last video of the day, but you can catch the other ones on Facebook or on our YouTube channel. We have the other two with Saba, our mandrel, and Rudy, our rhino. So now we've got Lisu, our leopard our clouded leopard. They've got these nice big long tails. And so let's talk about what we're feeding her and why. <laughs> so this is her, one of her six feedings that she gets every day. She gets six feedings of venison. So a couple of years ago, Lisu presented with some upset stomachs. Um, she, her body was rejecting a lot of the food that she was eating. Um, so over time we had to figure out what was going on in our most, um, we can walk over this way to get closer she's to her. Right mm -hmm. She's like, you're not feeding me. Lisu. <laughs> um, she's like, I don't trust Kelsey anymore. Yeah, but we figured she most likely had a meat allergy. Um, so we tried a bunch of different types of meat, and then the one that worked best was venison. There, there aren't really any cases of cats being allergic to venison, um, whereas other meats like beef or pork or equine, um, there are cases of cats developing that allergy over time. So even though she had received meat, for years, uh, her body just stopped digesting it and was having a pretty large reaction to it. So venison worked well, um, but unfortunately she couldn't take a lot at once. Her stomach was healing, her body wasn't doing well. So we had to take her normal amount of food that she would get in her two normal feedings in a day and spread it out. So that started with about a 15 gram meatball um, for perspective. This is my hand. This is an 87 gram meatball. Wow. So we started with 15 gram meatballs and we fed her up to 14 times a day. So we had spread those uh, meatballs out at least an hour. We had zookeepers coming in in the middle of the night to feed her those 15 grams to spread that out. Um, and then slowly we were able to eliminate some of those feedings and make those meatballs larger mm -hmm. um, and build up to this six feeds a day. Oh wow. Um, so that is just, that is the dedication too. that our keepers put in for mm -hmm. our animals. So here she comes to get one of her little bites of her meatball. We don't feed it all at once. Yeah. That'd be a pretty big bite. And also Good. with feeding is training. So we asked her to stand so we can check her body condition and possibly for other health related. Open. Open so we can see her mouth and check out those big teeth. Yeah, so one of my favorite facts about clotted leopards is that their canine teeth are the largest in relationship to their body size of any cat. So her canine teeth are about as big as a tiger's canine teeth. Um, but tigers weigh, you know, up to 400 pounds and she weighs about 25. 25 pounds and it's all tail. <laughs> is her tail yeah, as long as her body? About, yeah, about as long as her body, um, which is great for balance. So you can see in her exhibit, 
um, that she's built to climb. She loves to be up in the trees. That's where she's most comfortable. Um, and that tail helps with balance. So just if you were walking on a balance beam, you would stick your hands out and kind of use those to counterbalance yourself. She uses her tail like that. So even when she's um, walking around just on the ground, a lot of times you'll notice that tail isn't touching the ground. She's kind of holding it up unless she's sitting and resting. So right on cue, she did a few <laughs> You target. And so talk to me about how we discover an animal has a has a food allergy because Lisu topped our list on our recent oh, DZTV of most particular eaters, whether that's just they don't like a food or yes. they need a certain food. Yes. But she can't tell us Correct. that she can't eat something. She doesn't show the classic human symptoms of like swollen lips or a rash. Mm -hmm. So how do we know a food's not working for an animal? Yeah, Lisu, it was pretty obvious she started regurgitating that food. She wasn't she wasn't even digesting it, so she was vomiting food. Um, that looked just like what we were giving her so um, it was her body was rejecting it pretty fast um, other things that we can pick up on we weigh her frequently so if she's not digesting that meat and we're seeing a lot of vomit then she's probably losing weight as well so we weigh all of the animals at least in our section at least once a month but we've been weighing her weekly just to make sure that we're keeping her at that optimal body condition um, other things too is just vomit without food if she's vomiting between meals or if she's eating a lot of grass, maybe that's signaling an upset stomach um, and she's vomiting that. So a couple different things, um, as well as just her, her interest in food. If if food is upsetting her stomach, then she's she doesn't want it. It's not reinforcing for her. She knows it's not gonna make her feel well. So um, her willingness to come down and eat and to train are indicators as well. She seems very into this venison. So where do we get this elk venison? Yeah, so this venison comes from New Zealand. Uh, we get it in one pound packages they're human grade um, so it's super high quality and then uh, we, we don't need to add anything to it she does get a couple of vitamins separately that she gets every day um, but it just it's like venison that if you eat venison you might eat so super healthy for her good for her very expensive too so when we talk <laughs> about nutrition and why we need that support some of that eighty three thousand dollars is going towards buying human grade elk venison importing it from New Zealand for Lisu because yes. for now it's all we know she can eat correct so um, we've been dealing with this for about two years so we have um, you know at first it was just getting to her to a healthy point again um, letting that her GI system kind of calm down and be less angry um, and we have tried to reintroduce certain food items um, initially when she started presenting with these symptoms we weren't sure if it was an allergy or if it was a specific meat that was causing the allergy but we didn't really have time to do a trial. So now that she's healthier, we have had time to introduce some things back and see how her body has responded. Um, so we have tried some rib bones, which used to be her favorite um, and other meats, but it seems like venison is working well. Um, so that's all she is receiving right now. And she gets a little over a pound a day. Michael wants to know where she sleeps at night. So um, if it's warm enough, she might sleep outside. So usually at night, if it's above, 32 degrees uh, one of the clouded leopards we do have two the other one is Taji will have the decision to um, spend the night in their holding area or out on exhibit or go between um, so if it's warm enough we've definitely seen them out here a ton they are more, more nocturnal so they're probably not sleeping much at night but they might be spending time outside um, but if not if it's too cold or if they decide they don't want to be outside there is a building um, kind of hidden behind the bamboo mm -hmm. next to their exhibit that has uh, large bedrooms for the clouded leopards with variety of options of different crates and beds and substrates that they can sleep on. We know a lot of our animals really sometimes prefer their back holding yeah. <laughs> their back bedrooms a little more I mean, private, it's more temperature control, <laughs> more time with the keepers themselves, Water. more treats, kind of more attention back there. So they really do like it. I was hoping we, I heard He's Taji over there. Over there. <laughs> but, I'm going to grab her back scratcher. And yeah. Scratch yeah. Go, so you can grab her back scratcher. I'm going to kind of show her. She's going to follow Kelsey wherever she goes. Cause she thinks she's still got more food to give her. <laughs> scratches and there's not any more food so she gets this nice scratcher i'm sure you can get one of these off amazon yeah. for yourself the back scratcher <laughs> um we pick the wooden one so if they steal it they can have it it's safe for them um ayla wants to know how old is lisu great question lisu is nine years old um average lifespan is is mid-teens like most cats so um when she presented with these health issues she was she was fairly young it wasn't like she was a geriatric animal um, presenting with 
normal old animal issues. So we're really glad that she's better and feeling good. She had a great weight. You can tell that she's super interested in her food yes, and probably like wishes they scraps. were a bigger meatball. Um, but we're oh, taking it Oh, there's Taji. You can see he's in the back holding yeah. area. Now, why can't they be in the same exhibit at the same time? Yeah, great question. So currently they don't live together, but you can see they're... Um, they're what we call a, a howdy, so there's a meshing in between them, so they can interact, touch a little bit, see each other, hear each other, smell each other. And like I said, she's <laughs> cycling right now, so they're very interested in each other. Um, but they, they did used to live together. They were introduced when Lisu was nine months old and Taji was six months old as a breeding pair. And they have successfully had a litter of cubs um, that are now on to other zoos and starting their own families. But when they were about six years old, they just kind of showed signs of being less tolerant of each other, which is consistent with clotted leopards um, at other zoos as well. So we made the decision to no longer put them together, um, which they seem to prefer, and they can interact and see each other at the howdies, and they inside in the bedrooms, they kind of take turns, so they definitely get to explore each other's territory and smell each other in that way as well. Couples grow apart. It mm -hmm. happens. Uh, hi, Xander. So Kelsey just answered this a little bit. She said they actually have bred before. Lisa and Taji have bred. They did have their own litter of cubs, which, oh my gosh, yes. I wish I'd been here to see. I can only Same. imagine how cute clouded leopard babies six are. Six years ago, they had oh. um, Pi and Rue. Um, so if you were at the zoo at the time, you might have seen them. And then there was a third cub that was um, born from a different mother, but was brought in to be raised with Pi and Rue, and her name was Saya. Oh, so cute. We hear she was over here getting all the scratches earlier. Now she's had her food and she's like, mm. yeah, so these guys, they can meow. You guys have heard that a lot. Mm -hmm. They can also chuff, which is like a greeting sound. Um, you might recognize it. It's what tigers uh, do. Um, and then they'll hiss and stuff as well. <laughs> if they're she's not very happy. chatty, but mostly it's the friendly chuffing and meowing. So yeah. you don't see her hiss too much. Yeah. So a reminder today is Colorado Gives Day, a huge day of philanthropy for nonprofits here in Colorado. Denver Zoo is a nonprofit that needs your help today. We are trying to raise $41,500, and that amount will be matched by members of our Board of Governors and our Leadership Council and very generous donors who are going to boost that total to $83,000. And that number might sound random, but it's really not. That's about as much as it costs to buy all the food for all of our animals every month here at Denver Zoo. It costs nearly a million dollars a year just to feed our animals, our grocery bill. If you think you spent a lot at King Supers this weekend, I promise you we spent more. <laughs> so we need your support. We are definitely going to always feed our animals the highest quality food, what they need and how much they need, but your support just helps make it possible. It takes a little weight off our chests as we go through a very difficult year. So now Lisa's kind of at the, she's looking she's out the back. Oh, so she can see the rhinos from here? Yeah, the, there's bamboo along the back of their exhibit, um, which helps make them feel more secure out here. So like you were saying earlier, um, sometimes people might not always see them in this exhibit, but uh, they just like to be secure. They are a predator, they're a carnivore, but that doesn't mean they don't have animals that are larger than them uh, that they're used to. So they also kind of have that um, seclu seclusive uh, behavior as well. So if you look in the exhibit when you guys are here, you might be able to see it now. There's hollow logs or like little boxes that they like to sleep in and hide in so they can see their surroundings but feel secure as well. Um, so that bamboo in the back helps as well, but there are some pockets that they can see through and then one of the elephant and rhino yards is behind there. Oh wow. So yeah, take the time when you walk by here because you might have seen them, you just didn't realize it. They kind of blend in, especially with the wood. So don't give up if you don't see them right away. They're not going to be kind of frolicking around that necessarily. That pattern they have where they get that clouded leopard name is, it's meant to camouflage yeah. them. It's meant to blend in with the, the way that the sun shines through the leaves of the trees kind of creates this um, speckled pattern and it kind of, that coat blends, helps them blend in and camouflage. So if you can't find them right away, it's working. Don uh, is, but they're probably out here if it's above 50 degrees. Yeah, Don is just joining us. Lisu is a clouded leopard. Taji, her former SSP partner is over there on the left. He's kind of got access to the back holding. And Lisu is what we call cycling right now. So she's liking the attention she gets from keepers yes. and Taji and everything, so. And I don't, it, 
you can probably see Taji's about twice her size. So she's about 25 pounds, he's about 45 pounds. Yeah. Which is normal for males and females to have that size difference. It's hard to tell when they're separated and yes. they're not next to each other who's who. But up close, you can definitely see big size difference between Lisu and Taji. Yeah, and they take turn, take turns coming out here. Um, so it's definitely harder to tell by size if they're out here which one it is but if she comes up you'll see she's got this like crown of dots on her forehead there she Lisu, is that makes it really easy to tell her apart. Lisu. <laughs> she's too interested in him to care she about is scratches just anymore. She got her dinner and now she wants to flirt <laughs> she, she does they're chatting up a storm right now so this kind of separation where they can see each other, possibly get a little bit of tactile interaction there. That's called a howdy. We do that with a lot of our animals when they're new to the zoo. Um, we're in Toyota Elephant Passage and when our two new boys, Jake and Chuck arrived uh, two years ago now, before we actually ever introduced them, we let them stand in a stall next to our other three elephants so they could see them, smell them, touch trunks and things like that. But it was safe for both of the animals that they weren't in each other's space just quite yet. So a howdy, it's a very, very important thing here at zoo. <laughs> so she's just kind of walking around. She's like, oh, I wonder if there's any more meat left for me to pick up over here. Uh, Karen wants to know how tall Lisu is. Do you mean while she's oh. on all fours or when she's standing? Let's go with like oh, gosh. head to tail. Numbers <laughs> Nose to tail. are not my forte. <laughs> um, head to tail, I don't know. What would you say? Like four, four, four feet. feet. Yeah, yeah I mean, her tail's really long, and her body's probably two feet. That tail's about another two, two more feet for sure. Yeah. Um, Taji's a lot taller and longer than she is, um, for sure. So, Hi. good question. Yeah. Hi, Cindy. Thank you for your donation. Cindy just donated five dollars, which immediately doubles to ten because of that matching from our members of our board of governors, leadership council, and generous donors. So, thank you so much. You've doubled your impact. You can donate right here through Facebook or you can donate through clicking that link in the description of this video. Uh, we'll take them either way. We appreciate the support and help. So I'm gonna take a few more questions for those of you who are just logging on. Let me know if you have any questions about Lisu, the clouded leopard. She's walking around back there. Uh, she's being featured today on our Facebook Live because we're talking about nutrition and how important it is to our animals. Lisu eats a specialized diet of only elk venison. It's the only meat she can tolerate. We discovered that she's having some type of meat allergy. She used to eat different types of meat. She's an obligate carnivore, so she's gotta eat meat. Um, but right now her stomach's really only tolerating elk venison. It's expensive, <laughs> it's human grade, but it's what she needs and we're always gonna provide it for her. So you can help us do that when you donate today. Looks like Karen said, thank you. So I guess we kind of answered it if it was nose to tail. They don't, they don't really stand up on their hind legs very much, do they? Yeah, we do. Um, if you were on when we were training her earlier, uh, we do ask her to stand up um, along the mesh, but definitely hard for her hard for her to balance too long and kind of sit upright like that on yeah. her back feet like maybe um, a meerkat would do. Her tail is not like a kangaroo's. It doesn't yeah, have like exactly. muscle in it for um, her to... But we do ask her to stand up so we can look at her paws and look at her stomach and get a good look at her during training. Um, which is what we were doing earlier. Is her tail prehensile? We talked about that term earlier with Rudy. It is not. Um, so it's super long, but it can't support her weight. She can't wrap it around a tree and hold on with it like maybe some monkeys could do or Ling, the prehensile-tailed skink that lives in the village hall building um, or like Rudy's lip um, it is not. So it's just it's just there for balance. Yeah. It's, got, it's got a reason. It's got a purpose. It's for balance, but not... Not for wrapping around kind of like monkeys and exactly um yeah she does have great control of it though i mean she holds it up when she's walking around it's important that she's got good control of it it's not just kind of like there behind her so. and if you're noticing that she's spending a lot of time in this area it's because taji our male is on the other side of that door they used to be a breeding pair but don't show much tolerance for each other anymore so they can see each other uh but they live in separate separate parts of the exhibit. He's in the back holding area today. She's got the main exhibit. Joint custody of the <laughs> exhibit. Yes, they do switch off. So he will, after this, we'll swap them and he'll have, he'll have the exhibit for the night um, or inside if he chooses. Yeah, whichever. Oh, thank you so much for your donation, Karen. $10, you've doubled it to 20. So I really appreciate that. So we're gonna see if Lisa wants to stay around for more scratches. She's just she just wants she's that attention. She's got, she's got some primal needs. 
So she is, yep, she's back to talking to Taji over there. <laughs> so thank you all so much for donating. Um, you can donate all day through midnight tonight for Colorado Gives Day. You don't have to do it during these lives. You can go to that link that's in the description. You can go to the Colorado Gives Day website. You can go to Denver Zoo's website. There are so many ways to donate and make an impact here on Denver Zoo. I hope you've learned something about zoo nutrition, our animals, what they eat, how they get it, and why it's so important. I don't think it's the thing a lot of people think about, but how we feed our animals is a huge undertaking here at Denver Zoo, and we're really proud to show that off. So thank you all so much for being with us today. That's all we've got, and we will talk to you later.